I want to greet everyone who's on the Perry Stone YouTube channel right now, and I have a very special message to all First Nations people. And if you haven't heard that term, I will explain it in a moment. My first, the first thing I would like to say is to express my devout love and appreciation to the Navajo uh, Reservation uh, in New Mexico and the wonderful people that attended our camp meeting there some time back under the tent and for the uh, opportunity and the invitation to minister to them. And they gave me some beautiful gifts. Look at this necklace. This is a beautiful necklace. And I've got, uh, I, I should have just put them all on, but I knew that would look, he would say, what is he doing? So thank you so much. Some of the most talented and gifted people when it came to arts and crafts that I have ever met in 46 years of ministry. Well, let me get to this subject matter that I'd like to share with you. And I do hope that if you are part of the First Nations community, a tribal community, that you will share this with others. Um, long before Christopher Columbus has allegedly discovered the United States and Amerigo Vespucci named the nation uh, after himself, actually, or they named it after him, I should say. But long before that, there were people and there were tribes that lived here in what we call the continent of the United States of America, what would later be called the United States of America. And if I start naming groups and I should leave one out, I do not do that on purpose. But on the east coast of uh, the United States was, of course, the Cherokee Nation that, that consisted of five different states. They lived in uh, five different states, a nation within a nation. And then when you begin to go, there were, there, were, there were groups, the Seminoles in Florida, and there were groups in Mississippi, Oklahoma. You have the Navajo Nation. You have the Apache. You have the Creek, the Crow. And, and again, these are just a few of many, many uh, tribal groups that are First Nations groups that are recognized and registered uh, federally through the United States of America. And most of them, of course, uh, or many of them, I should say, live on reservations. Some have their own cities and towns and communities now gratefully and thankfully and are able to uh, thrive and, and survive and work jobs and educate their children. However, I want to share something with you that the Holy Spirit gave me while I was preaching uh, in Shiprock, New Mexico. And this will be brief. It, it, you, have, you actually have to go into a detailed study to arrive at the conclusion that I arrived at. But let me see if I can abbreviate this for you because I know that YouTube, you know, you like to get through those messages as fast as possible. Um, not far from where I live, I, I, I haven't actually measured it, 15, 18 miles away or so, is Red Clay here in Tennessee. Uh, Bradley County is the county that I live in, and Red Clay was the last council ground for the Cherokee Indian before they went on the Trail of Tears, the horrible Trail of Tears that ended in Oklahoma. The um, Red Clay has a flame of fire that's in a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, stone encased area with glass that is fed by uh, natural gas that is called the eternal flame that reminds people who walk on the property of the tragedy of the Cherokee to always remind them of what the Cherokee nation had to go through. Now, it was just not the Cherokee. There were practically every other group at some point uh, had their land and property that they had owned and controlled and hunted and farmed on for, for literally centuries seized from them. In some instances, that property was purchased. Sometimes it was illegally taken. And there's a very, very uh, uh, actually horrible history of men who came from Europe, originating from Europe, including some of the Spaniards, of their terrible, horrible mistreatment of all of the First Nations groups. Wherever they went, they, uh, there was a lot of, uh, of mistreatment. There was rape. There was murder. And, and it, it's just a horrible history. But in, in the process of time, many of the people that are of the First Nations group were, were, were taken by, uh, you know, sometimes back in the 17, actually it started in our area in the 1800s, and they were put on what is called reservations. Now, the reservations were often pieces of property <clears throat> that in some instances were not pleasant places at all. It was just in some cases, it was land that quote unquote, that the white men from Europe did not even really want. 
And I don't want to get into the controversy of that. So when I was ministering several years ago, I, I wrote a book and it's not been published. So please don't ask for the book. It's not been published called Guardians of the Sacred Fire. And it's a, it's a Cherokee story of taking the fire from the area of Murphy, North Carolina, all the way on the Trail of Tears in a pot and keeping it burning, Guardians of the Fire. And I started doing some research and I discovered that in some of the greatest revivals, especially in American history, that the person heading them up had a background of being part of one of the First Nations tribes. Uh, if, let me give you an example. The Great Healing Revival was headed up by a man named Oral Roberts, whose mother was a full-blooded Cherokee. And then you can go to a list of men, and you can search this yourself. I'm, I have somewhere in the book, when I put it out, and again, it's not been put out, I've listed about 15 individuals who came through the Great Healing Revival of 1948 to 1955, and also are ministers today who have either a direct lineage to the First Nations tribal groups, whether they be Cherokee or Navajo, Creek or Crow, or some of the other wonderful groups that are there. And we find, we, I find out that the healing revival and some of the greatest revivals in America were actually originated and started by, guess what, people with a tribal background of the First Nations people. And I'm going to abbreviate this, and I wish I had time to just go into the minute details. But when I was preaching on the Navajo Reservation, I shared with them something that I felt like the Lord gave me. I said, land is not really your inheritance. Land is your blessing. You know, in Israel, for example, the land is promised as a blessing and an inheritance to the seed of Abraham through Isaac. And that's why there's this battle going on today over the land. But in the case of the First Nations people, although much of their land was seized or taken or bought out from under them, here's something that's very important for them to hear. I believe, based on the historical study that I have done, that you have a far greater inheritance than land or desert or rocks or property, even though you're very connected to nature, and I understand that. Your land and your, your inheritance actually is a dynamic spiritual inheritance given by God Himself. Many of the people I know that are of the Cherokee background are used greatly in dreams and visions. Many of the people of the First Nations group, once they become converted to the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit, are given tremendous gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 10, list 9, and they begin to operate in these spiritual gifts. See, God knew that you're a visionary. He knew that your spirit was sensitive to the spirit world. So once you come to the relationship of a covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ, God opens up those gifts and places them in your spirit. The inheritance for the First Nations people is and will be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for these last days. I believe, and I believe it with all of my heart, that from the Midwestern part of the United States all the way into the West, especially that area of Arizona and New Mexico and Utah and Wyoming and Idaho and Montana and North and South Dakota, all those areas where the First Nations people, many of them are, including Oklahoma with the Cherokee uh, Nation, I believe that your inheritance is going to be heading up and spearheading for the tribes of the earth the final outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I feel something telling you that. God's going to raise up your sons and daughters. God's going to raise up young preachers out of every one of these tribes who are going to boldly operate under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I believe auditoriums are going to be set up with meetings and they're going to be a part. I believe there's going to be big tents that's going to be brought into that part of the country and set up on the reservations themselves in certain areas. And people are going to come together and experience healing, deliverance, salvation, and yes, the ability to forgive those who have harmed you in the past. You know, I'm not from the past. I was not a racist. My father was not a racist. My father loved people of every color. So therefore, I was never raised by anyone who uh, would call someone a derogatory name. My father, pardon me, but I'm old school. My father would take a belt and beat me to I saw stars and stripes if I would ever call a black person by the N word. 
He would, he would not put up with it because he was a man of compassion and love who loved all people. And I realized that in the African-American community and also in the First Nations people, there was a lot of things done in the past that were horrible and bad. But my friend, we have to forgive the past and we've got to move on into the destiny, a powerful, revelatory, anointed, inspirational destiny that God has for all of those who are a part of the First Nations. And I want to tell you something. One of the greatest things we have to understand is God's love for all people. The Bible says in heaven, they come out of every tribe, nation, kindred, tongue, and people. All are going to be in heaven together, so we all must learn to get along well here and release the past and move into the future. As Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching for the things that are before. I believe for the First Nations people that your spiritual inheritance of the power of the Holy Spirit, of the healing anointing, of the gifts of the Spirit that you haven't even hardly tapped into yet because no one's ever told you, or perhaps they haven't, you got an inheritance waiting on you. You got more than a blessing of land. You've got an inheritance in the Lord. I do know the Lord spoke to me several years ago to go west. And we have preached 40 some years, predominantly in the southeastern part of the United States. And sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. In other words, I preach to Christians. But when you go out west and you see the hunger and the desire and how they love the Word of God, we believe and I believe that the time will come that a lot of my ministry will be in the Midwest and the western part of the United States, especially to the First Nations people. And it, of course, it's going, to, it's going to take a lot of income for us to do what we want to do and set up meetings. But the Lord has always provided for us. I don't worry about that. I just want to be in the will of the Lord. So I want to encourage all of you that you have something coming in the days ahead. God has promised to pour out His Spirit on sons and daughters, servants and handmaids. And you will be, without a doubt in my mind, a part of what God has. So it's time for you to start praying, fasting and preparing for what the Holy Spirit has for you and your children. And remember, it doesn't matter where you live now. It doesn't even matter whether you feel like you're in total poverty. When you're a believer and Jesus comes, you're going to be walking on streets of gold, coming through a gate of pearl, and you'll have a mansion that was built by God himself. We have a lot to look forward to. But until then, we're going to do the will of God and see people delivered through the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope this has encouraged you. I really do. And I want to, I want to say to the Navajo people, so many of you that we met, you are some of the most generous people that I've ever met in my life. And I love you. And I can't wait till we go west and I can bring my precious wife who has Cherokee blood in her. Her, great, her uh, grandmother was full-blooded Cherokee. And let her be a part of her tribe coming together with your tribe in Jesus' name. God bless all of you, I pray. Keep watching our program. And sh please share this with other First Nations people. Would you do that for me? Share it on the internet and pass it on and, and so on. And uh, God bless you. And watch this because we always have something special to offer you to help us, help us to continue to do what we're doing. Thank you. Our new offer is one of the most important prophetic teachings in the history of Manifest. Hebrew expert Bill Cloud and I teamed up on this 10-hour teaching to unlock the mysteries concealed in Israel's seven festivals. This album has 11 DVDs that are 21 30-minute lessons. They include illustrated messages and charts and pictures to enhance the details of the research. On the first DVD, I explain God's seven appointed festivals along with God's prophetic calendar. Bill Cloud then shows you a complete Passover Seder and explains the mystery of unleavened bread, unlocking its prophetic purpose, including the revelation of the Messiah. I then follow up taking you on a journey to illustrate the prophetic layers found in the Festival of First Fruits. Bill presents the fourth festival dealing with the powerful significance of Pentecost and its impact upon us today. On DVD number six, I will explain the three fall festivals and how they are yet to be fulfilled, showing how trumpets and the different shofar sounds on that day encrypt the mystery of Christ's return for His bride and the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Then I explain the biblical and ancient temple rituals of the sixth festival, Yom Kippur, and how they detail the great tribulation judgments yet to come. On DVD number nine, See Bill Cloud set up a sukkah, walking you step by step through the practical and prophetic meaning of Israel's seventh festival, also known as the Seasons of Our Joy. 
Among the live audience, the most talked about DVD was lesson number 10, where I examine Israel's three biblical harvest cycles that prophetically conceal the rapture, the tribulation, and the millennial kingdom through the festival harvest patterns of ancient Israel. The 11th and final DVD will stir your spirit as I reveal God's plan to restore His glory to the earth in these last days. This teaching introduces to the viewer unique Hebrew word studies, fresh biblical insight, unusual Jewish customs, and exciting prophetic truth, helping you to understand the future according to God's festival calendar. It was preached before a live audience of ministry partners, and this teaching was originally designed as a Perry Stone Bill Cloud ISO Bible course that normally is $150. However, right now you can receive the 11 DVDs as a limited time offer in an album for your donation of $75 or more. To order your set, go online at perrystone.org, call toll free 1-888-21-BREAD or write the ministry and send your donation of $75 or more to Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320. Now remember when writing or calling, use offer number 11DVD101. Help keep manifest on the air. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.